Hello, I'm Travis Von Bradford, and today I'm going to be making a controversial video. I'm aware that anything that is on a sociological order of magnitude is going to be controversial. And I know that the title of this video is going to get a lot of traction because people like to talk about stuff based on mood, circumstances, and relationships with other human beings. Most humans are neurologically incapable of talking about stuff purely based on experiments, observations, and inferences. However, this, is, this video can be used as a catalyst to get rid of the noise that emerges from certain neurological obsolescence and put more signal into the conversation based on experiments, observations, and inferences. So why have, hasn't any African Americans won a Nobel Prize in physics? So let me give a little context before I get into my findings. Number one, I know that it's going to be a lot of little edgy Euro-Americans who are going to come on this video and um, what do they like to say in the South? Show their ass. Uh, what you need to understand is that statistically, African-American women are actually doing better than a lot of you edgy Euro-Americans when it comes to research. So you firstly need to understand that. You also need to understand that America is falling behind when it comes to research. So remember, if you're going to come on here and be sadistic and hedonistic and talk about uh, Terrence Howard, hey, yo, that's Terrence Howard. I know how you people think. OK, I've read Sung Tzu. I know my enemy and I know myself. I know you like to cite Terrence Howard. You like to cite Yakub. That's because you're neurologically defective and you can only do things based on reward dependence. And your highest accomplishment will be non-existence. Now that I've taken care of that to the African-Americans, I am not making this video to be mean. And this video is not intended to elicit a negative hedonic reaction out of you. This is not just for African-Americans. The Malays have not won a Nobel Prize in physics. The Indonesians have not won a Nobel Prize in physics. The Kenyans haven't won a Nobel Prize in physics. Um, the Nigerians have not won a Nobel Prize in physics. There was a time in which... The British, the Arabs, the Chinese, and the Indians did not have this information. Yet they do have it now. When it comes to things that I'm talking about stuff on the level of Chandra Shekhar. I'm talking about stuff on the level of Abdus Salam. I'm talking about stuff on the level of Marie Curie. I'm talking about stuff on the level of Albert Einstein. I'm talking about stuff on the level of someone who I've met Frank Wilczek, who won a Nobel Prize for um, discovering things dealing with asymptotic freedom in quantum chromodynamics. Now, I know you may be wondering what that is, but I'm not going to get into a discussion about uh, quarks and gluons at this time. So understand that every ethnicity has had a time when they didn't have a certain level of knowledge, but it took someone to help them get to that point. And with this video, I want to warn some people about some, some of the findings that I have. Okay. Now, one more thing before I get into my findings. Um, this isn't just due to systemic racism. Uh, that is not, we got to take a little bit more personal responsibility. That is not the sole cause as to why we haven't discovered, um, why you can't know the position and the momentum of a particle at the same time. Systemic racism isn't the primary reason why we didn't discover why um, matter causes space-time to curve and the curvature of space-time causes matter to move. It wasn't solely systemic racism. I mean, the Indians had a deep 
caste system. The Pakistanis were poor. The Chinese people were very poor after World War II. Yet they've all contributed to very fundamental things in physics in which there was some kind of breakthrough. So we need to understand what were some of the mitigating forces that have caused this. Now, I've done this based somewhat on AI and somewhat based off of some other findings. I'm not going to name the names right now because it might come off. I think it may come off a certain kind of way. But basically, we're trying to perform a root cause analysis on group one's methodology and group two's methodology. Now, group one are African-American physicists who have I'm not going to name their names, but I'm just going to name their research. They have um, done certain things in physics that is coming close, but not quite there. And some of their research, a lot of it deals with some of the stuff that I research, uh, quantum cosmology, some of it is string theory. Some of these people are just science communicators. They're just worried about diversity in STEM. They're not actually doing science. And that's actually hurting us in a weird way. Some of these people do stuff that's um, dealing with very advanced mathematics. Okay. We we have excelled at very advanced mathematics. And I mean, I'm not just talking about like uh, just regular kind of numbers, like real numbers and stuff like I'm talking about grass, grass manian numbers, like things on that level. Uh, different types of topology, different types of lemmas. Yeah, Africans and African-Americans and lots of different races have excelled at stuff like that. But then I'm comparing them with people in group two. Now I'm going to name some of the people in group two. Alan Guth, Paul Dirac, Irvin Schrodinger, Chen Shen Wu, uh, Abdul Salam, Frank Wilczek, Richard Feynman, um, Max Planck, Bogoliabov. He didn't, I don't think he won a Nobel Prize, but he probably should have. Um, we're just comparing their methodologies. Okay. Now, here's one thing that I think may be holding African Americans back. We focus more on science communication than actual science. We want to be the face of science rather than actually doing it. And there's nothing, I have a lot of things about science communication, okay? I don't think it's that effective. I think most of the people who watch the universe on the History Channel and how the universe works on the Science Channel and PBS Space Time, most of them are just doing it for hedonistic reasons and they're not going to do any research with it and they're wasting their time. However, it does spark the imagination in lots of people. So I'm not saying it's 100% useless. However, we tend to go more towards science communication rather than actual uh, research. We try to go into public understanding engagement. That's, am I a science communicator? I just get on YouTube and tell people what's on my mind. I'm not necessarily a science communicator. Plus, a lot of the stuff I talk about in comparison to a lot of my African-American counterparts is not for the general public. It's for postdoctoral research. So, yes, that's one thing we need to. I'm not saying we need to stop doing science communication, even though I think it's I think it's useless for any race to really do it in the general public because they're not really, they don't really care about it. However, if we are going to do science communication, we need to do it more like Richard Feynman. He communicated his research. He went to different lectures to communicate his research, not just science in general. Alan Guth communicates his findings on inflation. Paul Dirac communicated his findings on antimatter and special relativity and uh, direct matrices and stuff like that. So yeah, we could be science communicators, but we need to communicate our research. Okay. Um, 
Another thing is we aren't excelling as much on experimental validations. So let me just say something. If you are an African-American or Malay or Indonesian or Papua New Guinean or Kenyan or Nigerian or if you're from Botswana or whatever, you need to be careful about getting into highly abstract concepts that may have no bearing on reality. We don't know if supersymmetry can be experimentally tested. We don't know if string theory can be experimentally tested. A lot of African Americans get into this kind of research. Why, why we are coerced into this, I am not quite sure. But we have been coerced into taking extremely um, theoretical stuff that may have no bearing on this reality we live in. So if you are going to get into some kind of theoretical physics, and I do study a lot of theoretical physics, but if that's what you're going to get into, try to talk to an experimental physicist. Try to, you know, communicate with experimental physicists. Like Chen Sheng Wu, well, I don't, I don't know if she's here anymore, but like people like Chen Sheng Wu or Alan Aspect. Like, Science doesn't matter unless it can be confirmed with experiments and observations. All, I'm not knocking string theory. It may be possible. Supersymmetry may be possible. But communicate with an experimental physicist before you get into something like this. Um, another thing is interdisciplinary research. Okay? We got to make sure we don't get into something so specific that it cannot be interdisciplinarily analyzed with other disciplines. Okay. We got to get into stuff that is a bit more interdisciplinary. Another thing is uh, our obsession with diversity. I think this is due to the anterior cingulate cortex taking precedence over other parts of the brain such as the Broca Wernicke, the inferior frontal gyri, the supermarginal gyri, the posterior, the posterior parietal cortex, the intraparietal sulculus, the angular gyri, and the middle temporal gyrus. So what does the anterior cingulate cortex do? That deals with an emotional response to pain. Okay, I get that you may have an emotional response to pain, the pain of our ancestors or, you know, people who may have, like the hidden, the people in hidden figures. If you've seen that movie, it's kind of weird seeing Sheldon Cooper talk to to Roger P. Hitz in, in such a manner. But yes, that there was a time when uh, white people would talk to black people like they were trash, even though they was intelligent. You got to let that go. You can't have that part of the brain, the anterior cingulate cortex, superseding the parts of the brain that deal with. Uh, visual spatial sketch pad, an empirical in a dialogue, decision making, working memory, effective processing, inhibition, concentration, attention span, spatial reasoning, object manipulation, language processing, number processing, spatial cognition, memory retrieval, and contemplation of distance. If your emotional response to pain supersedes these things, you will never succeed. And that applies to any race. That applies to any human. Okay? You gotta let that stuff go okay so we can move on and be on par with other entities okay so i get it i, I get it it's the interior cingulate cortex and your emotional response to pain but you got to let that stuff go diversity has to emerge from us actually doing it and we can't just give up just because we have certain hurdles you have to keep going you get what I'm talking about? Um, that, so some of the root causes is, you know, we're not interdisciplinary. We focus too much on theoretical physics and science communication rather than an interdisciplinary mix between theoretical physics and observational and experimental physics. And 
it could be funding as well, but that's not as much of the aspect. So we need to get into why we co we got to get to why we've been coerced into taking these highly abstract things. And I think it has to do with a lot of our doctoral advisors uh, steering us in this direction. But to be fair, they've been steering every race in, into this dubious direction. It's not just us. It's just that we've suffered the most from it. So, um, yeah, if you are African-American, if you are from Botswana, if you're from Nigeria, if you are from Malaysia, if you're from Indonesia, if you are from South Africa, if you are, you know, people who have, you know, we have yet to make do something on the level of Heisenberg or Einstein. My advice would be that you not focus so much on uh, science communication unless you have already discovered something and you're trying to communicate your findings at various lectures. Now, that's different. But just science communication, just to be doing it, just to, you know, just to be viral, don't do that. You're only hindering things. Um, don't, I'm not saying abandon theoretical physics. I'm not saying that, but consult experimental and observational physicists about the feasibility of what you're studying. Make sure it's more interdisciplinary or cross-disciplinary, okay? And the diversity will come from our strength, not from forcing it out of an emotional response to pain. It will come from our willpower, okay? So if you're a person who's, you know, kind of champion this, you know, DEI and diversity stuff, you got to focus more on educating, educating these individuals more so than doing things based off of your emotional response to pain or blind empathy, or the amygdala, based off of anger or fear, or the left fusiform gyrus, based on just people's faces. Do they look like me? Those parts of the brain cannot supersede the um, broca wernicke inferior frontal gyri, super marginal gyri, posterior parietal sulcus, um, the intraparietal sulcus, the angular gyri, and the middle temporal gyrus. Cannot supersede those parts of the brain or you will succumb to self-sabotage. And we may even succumb to a collective self-sabotage. But um, yes, that's uh, pretty much what I have to say about this. To all the edgy kids who I know are going to come in this video and start nonsense, if I do approve your comment, just know that you are a guinea pig for science and a lab rat. And I'm only approving your comment so that I can better know my enemy and know myself so that I don't have to worry about the plight of a thousand battles.